After the success of Grand Theft Auto 3, game developers saw open world sandbox adventures as the way to financial and critical acclaim. Many so-called GTA clones were released across multiple platforms and even cross gaming generations, the latter being the original Saints Row promising to be the next evolution in sandbox offerings with a grittier, more freeform experience compared to Grand Theft Auto. Saints Row delivered a solid experience, eventually outdone by its predecessor. Then developer Violition decided to switch gears and embrace the absurdity from Saints Row and Saints Row 2, while upping the ante in more ways than one. Nearly a decade after its original release, Saints Row the Third gets the remastered treatment, and I was excited about heading back into Steelport to play through another maniacal adventure. Not to be confused with the recent remakes that have flooded the gaming market as of late, the third Saints Row is a remaster through and through, with better graphics and intended better technical performances. The game plays exactly as it did in 2011, with achievements and trophies also retaining a majority of the requirements for completion, including attaining all the multiple collectibles, finishing every side quest, be it the diversion activities, assassinations, and vehicle thefts and seeing the main story's finale with two different endings. After a little over 30 hours, I finished the majority of what is associated with the base offering for the Platinum Trophy, before spending a few more hours playing through the relatively easy three pieces of DLC automatically connected to this package. Being a remaster of an experience that came out during the tail end of gaming's seventh generation, Saints Row the Third Remaster's initial presentation from a visual aspect is definitely commendable with better and brighter environments to match the more detailed faces of the main protagonist. Vehicles arguably gain the most from an aesthetic perspective by being remodeled to resemble something more realistic than the horribly rectangular and almost cartoonish versions of what was presented almost a decade ago. Though the base game and its DLC mostly looks great, there are some definite issues including the developers not redoing the lip syncing so it'll fit the new character models. The audio is a mixed bag. Like the original iteration, guns and even the aforementioned cars sound pretty uninspired, hollow and downright muted. On a positive note when it comes to the sound is the retention of the original soundtrack. So much licensed music including Kanye West's Power, Opet's The Lotus Eater, Black Rock's Done Did It, and What I Got by Sublime all return in grand fashion, making it so easy to just sit around and let the radio stations play through an entire playlist. What hasn't changed at all is the gameplay or the mission presentation. Rooted in the core mechanics seen in a majority of open world, sandbox, third person shooter offerings, the player will take a created character and leader of the Third Street Saints into the town of Steelport after a bank robbery gone wrong. The story plays out just like it did in 2011, where the criminal gang turned megastars try to assert themselves in a new town, with a few missions featuring choices that may boost a player's bank account or their much lauded cred, known simply as respect. Respect is the basis of upgrading the created character's passive and active abilities, like faster regenerating health, making the boss fireproof, or forcing the removal of a full notoriety bar so the player isn't hunted by those the boss has wronged. Players can shoot nameless grunts and barbaric brutes by utilizing a variety of upgradable weapons including shotguns, pistols, and even a gigantic adult toy. Some guns feature upgrades that greatly change the object's performance, including shooting bullets that set the targets on fire. Beyond the weapon upgrade system, there is very little that differentiates its main gameplay features from other games in the genre, including its own predecessors and successors. The only real unique gameplay addition to the third was and still is the action button. A button when used can have the protagonist pull off some abusive attacks, including a simple punch to the genitals or a Dwayne The Rock Johnson style float over DDT. There aren't a lot of unique action button moments to see before the animations begin recycling, but doing something like leapfrogging an unsuspecting victim prior to punching said target in the mouth rarely gets old. 
What hasn't aged poorly are the diversions Saints Row games are known for, including blowing up everything in front of the character with a rocket launcher full of infinite ammo, or jumping in front of speeding cars to get that sweet insurance fraud money. The side mission offerings don't overstay their welcome and aren't too difficult to complete, including optional assassinations, vehicle theft, and finishing the very grind-heavy in-game challenges, such as blowing up 60 helicopters and landing 500 headshot kills. All the modes from the original iteration return here, including the option of playing through the game's enemy wave-based survival mode, known as Horde Mode. Horde Mode can be completed by oneself or with a partner via online, as can the main campaign. Unfortunately, the offline co-op option is not associated with this version. The three DLC packs that were released in 2012 arrive here with all the extra accessories, weapons, and vehicles for the player to use less than an hour after starting a new game. This aged experience technically isn't the strongest, even though it came out almost a decade ago on weaker hardware. Beyond the graphical inconsistencies and gameplay functionality still rooted in 2011, including the inability to change the controller layout on consoles to fit more modern standards, Saints Row III suffers from frame rate drops and bugs, such as vehicles getting stuck in the ground when driving. On the PS4, the third can go from running smoothly to hiccuping, to the game actually freezing for a second or two. This stuttering frame rate problem is more than just an annoyance, as it can affect the player succeeding in certain missions, including the rather frustrating heli assault. These frame rate problems are apparently more frequent for PS4 and PC owners than Xbox One players, though the latter has inconsistent frame rates when driving around the town or being involved in a hectic gunfight. During my entire playthrough, there was only one major crash and no corrupted saves. This is made for the dedicated saints of the world who were around during the franchise's heyday, and maybe not new fans who have played more technically pristine open world shooters, where the game's humor and plot won't be enough to distract players from the feeling of been there, done that, in regards to SR3's gameplay. This is truly the optimum Saints Row the Third package when everything works right. The gameplay and mode offerings are still as wild as they were in 2011, with a lot for the player to take part in, especially with the addition of all the DLC. But the inconsistent technical issues are the game's biggest flaws. For every time the game runs smoothly, there's a time when the frame rate frustratingly drops to zero not to mention graphical problems and other bugs that can hinder progression. Until these technical issues are fixed, it's hard to fully recommend this package, just like not recommending standing in front of a naked guy running around with a phallic object the size of a baseball bat while drugged out of his mind. And this naked thing better than I thought you were. I mean, this just this feels right. Should we get leave him like this? I say we let them out.